I dream of going up to her and sitting down next to her, taking her in my arms and saying, look at me, listen to me. You will survive. You will have a good family of your own and three children. And as hard as it might be to imagine, your daughter will grow up and become the president of the United States. Wow, that happened. Failed presidential candidate and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton breaking down in tears as she read what would have been her 2016 presidential victory speech. Many are now blasting Clinton, calling the moment cringeworthy, and I think that's complimentary compared to what it actually was. Joining us now to discuss, CEO of the Starnes Media Group, radio host of the Todd Starnes Show, author of Our Daily Biscuit, Devotions with a Draw, Todd Starnes. Also with us tonight is the CEO of Free Space Social, John Willis. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. And Todd, we begin with you. I cannot recall in, in presidential history where we have had a former candidate read, break down into tears reading a speech that would have been the victory speech. This is surreal. Yes, and excuse me if, if I become a bit emotional, um, Chris, during this segment. Uh, that truly was a traumatic moment for all of us in, in America. Uh, look, I, I think Hillary probably is uh, going to get some sort of a Grammy or perhaps Emmy nomination as a result of that uh, dramatic performance. Uh, but it's a load of grade A hooey, and I think we all understand that. Uh, the reality is, and I think this is the more shocking part of this, this was 2016. Hillary Clinton, Mrs. Bill Clinton, as we call her, uh, has still not gotten over the fact that she lost to Donald John Trump. And I think it's going to be some time before she uh, comes to terms with the fact that she, in fact, is a loser. Maybe she needs some therapy. Call Dr. Phil. Who knows? Well, John, I'm going to give you a, a swing at this. I, I, I just I, I can't. I, I guess in the circle she runs in, you have if you're a victim, you get cachet. I mean, and I remember I think during the one one of the one of her failed bids at the presidency, she was told to cry more by by some of her consultants. So maybe, maybe do you think she might actually see weakness in the Democrat Socialist Party right now, and she might want to parlay this into some sort of future run? What's your sense? Well, first, what they should have done is had the Curb Your Enthusiasm theme music playing right after she got done reading that story, because <laughs> it would have made the video just absolutely perfect. Um, you know, I showed that video to my daughter last night, who's seven years old. She's like, why is that lady crying? I said, because she's crazy. Uh, but yeah, it, it, I don't know what she's doing. I, it, it's some, some false sense of reality where she's trying to get some sort of sympathy. But, you know, it's funny how you're talking, you're telling the story about how they're telling her to cry more. They just want her to be more human. That's one of the that's one of the, the biggest problems that we see on on the political the, the difference of the political aisle here. You know, we they want them to be more human because the way they're portraying themselves, you know, you see it in the White House press conferences, you see it in other press conferences where they just come across as so cold and callous. And that's one thing that Hillary uh, Hillary Clinton has always been described as is cold and callous and cackling, but she didn't and do it in that video. calculating. Yes, yes, and calculating absolutely. Todd, I want to pick up something with you. Uh, let's go to the other side of the political aisle, to the Republicans. Mitch McConnell, who you will never see crying. I, I, that, that man has one tone. It's right, right, right there. He has done this deal, Todd, with, with Democrats. And he, as the leader of the Republicans in the Senate, has done this deal from, from what we can tell. And again, Senator McConnell, if you want to come on, if there's something we're missing here, Please correct the record or send us a statement. What the hell? I mean, communicate. I mean, the only people he's talking with, Todd, are Democrats. But from what we can tell, he got this deal done to allow the socialists to raise the debt ceiling, to allow the Republicans to all vote no as some show vote, but it will maintain the Democrats' ability to use reconciliation to move their better before Biden bankrupt boondoggle through. How... Where is it written that it says that Republicans must facilitate Democrat socialists so they're not as big a screw up as as and, and earn the, the, the ire of the American people as they so richly deserve? 
You know, it, it's a terrific question, uh, Chris. And look, President Trump warned us that what old Crow would do, uh, that is his new nickname uh, for the old uh, Senate minority leader. Uh, and, and President Trump predicted this. He, he knew exactly what was going to happen. Unfortunately, many of the establishment Republicans never learned any lessons from the Trump years. And what was the, the main lesson? It was to deliver on your campaign promises. Look, we have seen time after time after time the Republican leadership capitulate on the promises they made to conservatives, to the base of the party. But the one thing that the Republicans claim to be um, are fiscal conservatives. Uh, we now know that is just simply not the case. And uh, at least uh, on our radio program, my radio program, uh, we've been telling people that anyone who supports this effort to uh, either uh, raise the debt ceiling or work with the Democrats on spending more of our tax money, every single one of those people, Chris, should be primaried, starting with old Crow himself. I want to pick up something on a Twitter account that closely monitored the trial. A former Jeffrey Epstein partner, Ghislaine Maxwell, was suspended yesterday after the tech company claimed the profile was violating rules against platform manipulation and spam. John, what's your reaction to this news and the overall downward trajectory of, of Twitter as a censorship platform for left-wing extremists? You know, uh, Twitter's doubling down right now when it comes to information control and distribution. So what we would normally see go viral in the past is now not going to happen anymore. Anything that resembles actual truth and actual facts is now being suppressed by Twitter. And with their new CEO, uh, that's going to get even worse. I mean, he, he has been very open in stating that uh, we need to get past the First Amendment, get past free speech. And it's that type of language that's that's pretty dang scary. So we all know that there's a lot of a lot of celebrities, a lot of big names in that black book of Ghislaine Maxwell's. And it's just very interesting that the one platform that has facilitated a lot of bad stuff over the years involving what Ghislaine and Jeffrey were involved with um, is uh, trying to control that information even more. Yeah, you know what? I, I've got to say, I, I can't. As they continue to spiral and circle down the toilet bowl of totalitarianism, who thought we would actually pine for the day when Rasputin was back in charge? I mean, seriously. Uh, Todd, the, the governor of the People's Republic of California, Gavin Newsom, spoke with uh, the leftists over at uh, The View, the, the shrews of The View, about the latest uh, rash of smash and grab robberies that have taken place in the once golden state. Listen. We're calling it out. There's no excuse. We don't condone that kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. We want to arrest and prosecute folks, and we are doing that. Property crime has gone up in many, many states, red states, not just blue states. Violent crime and property crime, for example, is higher in Texas than it is in California. I don't see that on Fox News. 39 states did what California did mm -hmm. since 2000, and that's raised this felony threshold, yep. which is what they're pointing to as the cause. Yeah. Even though we did it in 2014, and crime Increased in 15, and 16, and 17, and 18, and 19. Yeah, 15, 16. What, what was going on in 16, 17, 18? Oh, yeah, Trump was president. But let's never mind that. that that's, a, that's an out, absolute fib. Out there in, in the People's Republic of California, they got left-wing Soros-backed DAs, Todd, that are out there. Uh, if you rip off a, a store... $950 or less, they're going to let you out in San Francisco and not even prosecute you for stealing stuff. It's just, it's absolutely crazy. Look it up there on the screen. U.S. cities, annual homicide records, they're all liberal controlled cities. This, this is a joke. These Democrats are trying to, to basically pee on America's feet and tell us it's raining. Yeah, look, I mean, it's, it's a great point you bring up. Uh, there was a smash and grab robbery in Los Angeles. They arrested 14 people for that crime. All 14 people were let go. They're back out on the streets pillaging and plundering. Look, uh, here's my take on it. I'm from the South, uh, Chris, so I don't mean to um, overly trigger people by what I'm about to say. Uh, there have been some controversies over a sheriff's department that posted a photograph of Santa Claus getting a concealed carry permit. I contend not only should Santa be packing heat on Christmas Eve, but so should a good many of the reindeer, especially if they're going to go into places like Los Angeles or San Francisco. <laughs> you know, the reality is a lot of these smash and grab stores uh, where the, uh, they've been victims of crimes, uh, they've been breaking into homes and robbing party goers. 
if all of the homeowners in California were armed, if all of the security guards were armed, I think we Thank might you. be able to cut down on the crime. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Santa better pack his armored reindeer this year. Todd Starnes, John Willis. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Appreciate the time. After the break, Congresswoman Lauren Boebert is getting some